What's up guys, it's Stas here and in today's video we're going to be talking about Finviz and how to scan for stocks using Finviz whether it's a short term play like a day trade or a swing trade or it's a long term play like maybe a 3 year hold, a 5 year hold, a 10 year hold, whatever it may be, Finviz is a very good tool for you to use and just to get this out here guys, this is not a sponsored video by any means, I wouldn't show and share with you guys a platform that I don't personally use. I personally personally love Finviz and use it all the time and the cool thing is you can actually have filtered criteria to pull up stocks that you are interested in potentially investing in or trading you know you can sift through PE ratio you know dividend yield industry sector volume you know beta there's a bunch of different stuff you know moving averages whether it's 10% below this average 20% whatever it may be and that's what I want to get to in this video so you can find Find your investments and trades a bit easier if you do decide to use Finviz. And by the way, this is the paid platform, which is why you're not seeing ads. You can actually use this for free, but the annoying thing is a bunch of ads pop up every couple of seconds. So I decided for me, I'm paying the $35, $40 per month, whatever it may be, to have access to this platform. So if you find value in this video, guys, if you enjoy the content, feel free to go down below and smash that like button. Consider subscribing if you want to see further content involving trading and investing and let's get right into it guys so once you go on to finviz.com this is what you see on the top you have news screener maps groups portfolio you can also do futures forex and crypto but that's for a whole nother video and on the bottom here you have the dow the nasdaq the s p its performance for that day and you have some stocks down here right you have some stocks that are the top gainers for the day in terms of percent some that have have hit new highs some that are seeing unusual volume some that have some insider buying and on the other side you have some top losers stocks that have lost a lot of value that day in terms of percent right some that have hit new lows some that are oversold and some that have insider selling so right off the bat you can use this to sift through these stocks and see maybe it's time to look deeper into the stock maybe it's time to invest in or potentially short-term trade the stock so right off the bat you you can see you know top movers top gainers which is very valuable one thing that I want to show you guys here that's very interesting about Finviz that I love about it is this maps feature let's take a look at this if you click on maps you can see pretty much all of the top stocks in industries and sectors out there you can see technology stocks right here and all of the different ones broken down right services basic materials financials consumer goods industrial goods utilities if we scroll down a bit you can see more and this is awesome guys I love this because it gives you a visual of how many stocks out there are green for the day how many stocks are red how down are they in terms of percentage right and you can also sift through different months of performance and different weeks right if you want to see the last week of performance you can see that you can see Google's down 0.14 percent Apple's down 0.38 percent in the past week if you want to do three months that's very cool you can see all the red ones over the past three months the green ones microsoft standing out here at 10 percent you know pfe right now down 14.47 percent you can do the year performance as well apple in the past year is down nine percent bank of america 12 percent so again this is just a very awesome way to get a visual on what's been going on over the past couple of months maybe the past six months year in the stock market broken down in individual industries um, and sectors which again is just awesome so now that we got that cool feature out of the way let's go to the screener so once you get to the screener tab of finviz this is what you see you have descriptive you have fundamental and you have technical this is a very awesome thing about finviz you can break and filter through stocks using some basic um, descriptive values of those stocks like the exchange market cap earnings date index dividend average volume ipo date etc you can break down stocks using fundamentals right and you can filter through stocks using these fundamentals pe ratio price to cash eps growth in the next five years sales growth the past five years right 
P slash S, you know, the price to uh, earnings to growth ratio, right? You can do PB, earnings per share growth past five years. There's just so much stuff you can do, right? Insider transactions, institutional ownership. There's just so many things you can filter through, and that's awesome, right? Technical, right? You can do technical ones like I mentioned in the beginning of the video. 20-day simple moving average, price below 40%, price 50% below, 10% below, etc. You can do beta, which is pretty much how volatile the stock is, you know, 20-day high-low, 52-week high-low. These are awesome things you can do. RSI, gap, change from open, candlestick, right, what type of candlestick it is there, you know, volatility. These are the things you can use. And now let me show you guys how to find stocks, whether it's long-term, short-term, using these filters. So I want to show you guys filters that I use in real time, right? I want to show you guys what I personally do and what I would do for particular stocks that I'm looking for. So let's say hypothetically now we're on descriptive and I want to find a stock that is a potential dividend payer. What am I going to do here? So market cap, I want my market cap 10 billion to 200 billion. And again, you can do whatever you want based on your criteria. But for me, I like blue chip companies with larger market caps for dividend plays. That's just how I do it. I know there's a bunch of ones that are under 10 billion market cap that offer great yields. But for me, this is what I want to sift through, right? 10 billion to 200 billion. I want a dividend yield of over 3%. I want at least a 3% um, dividend yield. In terms of average volume, I want to do at least over 1 million for average volume here. So country, I'm going to do the United States, USA. And here for price, I want to do over $50 per share. So let's see if I can find over 50. Boom, over $50 per share. So now a bunch of stocks are pulled up. And one thing to mention here, guys, you know, just by using a filter, it doesn't mean like, okay, I pick a stock at random and then I invest in it. No, the filter is for you to see potential stocks that fit your criteria and then for you to pick those stocks and go deeper into them. Look at their balance sheet, financial statements, cash flow, you know, income statements, all the annual reports, whatever it may be, a bunch of other research goes into it, right? So we can see here, based on this basic criteria, 10 to 100 billion or 200 billion, whatever it was, over 3%, average volume uh, in terms of dividend, average volume of over 1 million, country USA, price $50, a bunch of these pop up. You have Dominion Energy, CVS. ABV, right, which is a very high paying dividend. I know that for a fact because I've been doing research on ABV uh, after this recent drop it's had. Um, DuPont de Nemours, right? We have, you know, let's see some other ones here. Kellogg, right? If we go to the next one too, you have a bunch of other ones. Realty Income, Philip 66, right? Let me see what other ones. 3M here. Go to the next one. We have, let's see, Walgreens. I know that's a high dividend payer. Win Resorts. You have United Parcel Service, right? That's UPS. So now let's say I was like, okay, I want to invest in CVS. I would click on CVS and then I'd do a lot more research on it. I'd break down its CPS. I'd break down its sales. As you guys can see here, I'd break down balance sheets, net income, all of these different things to determine whether or not I want to invest in CVS. So looking at the fundamental point, portion of this scanner, this is where you can get very nitty gritty with the ratios and with the specific numbers and metrics that you want your companies to have, right? That you want the scanner to pull out. Again, like I said in the beginning of the video, you can look at PE ratio, earnings growth, debt to equity, return on equity, return on investment, whatever it may be, right? There's a bunch of nitty gritty stuff that you can get in here. So let's say hypothetically, I want to find a growth stock, a stock that's growing its revenues, its earnings, its return on equity is great. You know, I don't want to invest in a company that's slow with that. I don't want to invest in, let's say, maybe a Coca-Cola, a J&J, &J, a 3M that's growing their revenues very slowly. I want to invest in a growth stock. What would I personally do? Well, me personally, I want to see EPS growth this year over 10%. And I'm doing over 10% because this is going to bring in all of the companies that are 
over 10%. So if there's a company that's 15%, it'll pull that in the scanner. I'll be able to see that and analyze it myself. If it's a company growing at 25%, it'll pull those in as well. Because let's say we only did over 30%, it's not going to pull in all of these stocks that are doing 25% growth, which could be very good investments, right? So I'm doing over 10% EPS growth this year. EPS growth quarter over quarter. Um, I might just leave that one. One, honestly, return on equity, I want over 10% on return on equity, return on investment over 10%, PE maybe under a 40, maybe uh, under 40, because if we're doing PEs that are extremely high, the companies could be overvalued, although growth stocks do have higher PEs, maybe let's just say under 45, right, under 45, that's a pretty high PE, but again, growth stocks have higher PEs. That's just how they're uh, evaluated, to be honest, guys. So under 45, we'll do that. Forward PE, let's say maybe under 40. I don't know. We'll just keep it at that. Sales growth past five years, let's do over 10%. So this is going to bring in a bunch of companies that have these specific criteria. And if we want to get even deeper with this, we can go to the all section here, as you can see from my cursor, and we can actually do market cap, right? Let's say we want these companies to be within, um, let's say, 2 to 10 billion, some smaller uh, companies that have a lot more upside due to the small market cap. Um, you know, you can do that. You can do, let's say, the exchange. No, we don't want to touch that. You know, dividend yield. None of these are really going to be paying dividend yields for the most part because they're growth companies. So let's just leave it at that. So you can see here, this is what's popping up. We have four different, you know, slides here, four different pages worth of stock. So now again, our goal is to sift through these, look at them and do deeper research into them, annual reports, financial statements, income statements, whatever it may be to understand whether or not this is worth putting money in, right? We have to look at a bunch of different things. So taking a look at a couple here, you can see these are smaller companies. You have Ameris Bancorp. I'll be honest, I don't know a lot of these, but a lot of them you're not going to know either, which is why research is essential, right? You can see Euronet Worldwide, you know, Columbia Sportswear Company. If we go a bit over here to the next tab, you know, we have Glacier Bank Corp, Five Below. That's one a lot of people probably know. Flagstar Bank Corp, um, Landstar System, and the list goes on, guys. So looking through all these is super key. And then fiddling with these filters because I can't fiddle with them on here too much because the video is going to be extremely long. But let's say, let's do one more very quickly here. You know, let's say we want to do large cap instead, 10 billion to 200 billion. Let's see how many come up. We have two pages worth of stocks now and these might be companies that you know a bit more we have biogen here activision blizzard we all know that one td ameritrade holding you know align technology that's the one that's a lot that a lot of people are talking about right now if we go over here to page two let's see some other ones nvidia right skyworks solutions twitter Walgreens. These are just a bunch of companies um, that are pulled up by this filter. And again, you just have to go into them, do deeper research and understand whether or not it fits your investment strategy and whether or not you want to put your hard earned money into this company. So now that we talked about scanning for dividend investments, scanning for potential growth stock investments, let's talk about short term plays, day trades, swing trades. How do I usually do this? What are my basic scanners? Let's get into that right now. So my strategy entails buying stocks that are more on the oversold side, right? So let's go to the RSI first and type in, let's say a 40 oversold, right? That's what I want my first filter to be. Because remember the RSI, the scale that I use is from 30 to 70. Anything above 70, close to 70 is overbought. Anything close to 40 and below 40 is oversold. So I kind of want it to be right at that oversold cusp at 40. And now I want to see some action with the moving averages. So I'll go here to the 20 day simple moving average. And I want that to be crossing above the 50 SMA. So you can see here SMA 20 crossed SMA 50 above. So let's see what pops up. And you can see it's not that many results. So what I would do now is I'd go and click some of these stocks, put it in my Thinkorswim platform, which is a charting software or whatever charting software you guys are using. And then
then I'd further break down my technical analysis from there. And the whole idea here, guys, is to continue playing with these filters. So let's say now I want one with a higher beta. Let's see if anything pops up. Probably nothing, right? Yeah, nothing pops up here. Let's say I want to move my overbought up, and now you can see, or my RSI up to overbought 60. Now you can see some stocks that may be running a bit, which is why they're overbought. So you can potentially catch a momentum play here. So let's say we want to take the beta off. Let's not mess with the beta here. More stocks are going to roll in, right? A lot of these are more to the overbought side. Maybe because the markets have been up recently, a lot of these stocks are pushing to the more overbought side. That does make sense, right? That does make sense at this point. So let's say you want to pop in some other data. We can go back to all here. And let's say we want to do market cap of 10 to 20 billion. Let's say we want to do volume. Where is the volume now? This is a lot of different filters here. I can't really see it. Current volume. Boom. Let's say we want to do um, hmm, over 500k in volume. Let's see what's starting to pop up now. We have one page here, Target. We have PepsiCo, Realty Income, Kroger, Duke Energy, Dollar General. So these are stocks that I'd throw in to the Thinkorswim charting software or again, whatever charting software I'm using and I'd sift through these and see if there's any opportunities. So let's go back to oversold, see if anything comes up. Nope. And uh, yeah, that's pretty cool, right guys? There's a bunch of different things you can do here. And again, I can't do everything in this video. I can't show you a bunch of different stuff because the video is going to be very long. The whole idea of this video is to kind of spark your mind and for you to go out there and Put a bunch of different things in for yourself and start to break down stocks. And you might find new stocks to invest in or trade. You might find a bunch of old ones that you're like, oh, wow, this one's looking pretty good right now. You know, it's just an awesome way to spark um, really just your mind and for you to just find a bunch of new stocks. So that's it for this video, guys. Honestly, if you enjoyed it, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you want to see further content from me and drop a comment, guys. Let me know what you thought about this video. What do you think about Finviz? And let me know what are your thoughts on scanning for stocks in general. I'd love to know your opinions on that. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.